Isang magandang magandang buhay po mga kasambuhay. Ako po si Father Domi Guzman ng Society of St. Paul, Doing All for the Gospel. At uh, sa ngalan po ng mga pari, mga brothers, mga seminarista po namin dito po sa Ecclesiastical Province ng Pilipinas at Macau, at gayon din po sa ngalan ng mga pari ng Arts Diocese of Manila, at gayon din sa ngalan po ng production crew ng TV Maria, kayo po'y aming tinitipan na makiisa, makimisa, dito po sa ating sambuhay, TV Mass. Ngayon pong linggong ito, ikalabing walo ng Agosto 2019. Ito po ang 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. At abangan po ninyo, sa susunod na linggo po ay special celebration po natin sapagkat sa susunod na linggo ay 8th anniversary ng atin pong sambuhay Sunday TV Mass. Siyempre po, binabati po natin ang ating mga regular na mga kasambuhay, ang ating po mga homebound na mga may sakit, lalo-lalo na po ang mga cancer patients po na nagpapagaling, nagpapalakas mula sa kanilang mga regular treatments po. No? Gayun din po, nais natin ipanalangin at batiin ang mga elderly, gayun din ang mga caregivers po ninyo, at ang mga personnel on duty, mga pulis, militar, mga doktor, at yung pong mga health workers sa iba't ibang mga emergency rooms ng mga hospitals. And in, syempre, hindi po natin kakaligtaan ang ating mga overseas Filipino workers, lalong-lalo na po ang ating mga seafarers, ang mga seamen at seawomen, na bu bukas, bukas o gabi o araw at gabi ang kanila pong nakikita ay walang iba kung hindi ang malawak na karagatan. Binabati rin po natin ang ating mga mission partners dyan po sa Canada. Pinangungunahan po ni Brother Alex Federis at gayon po ang mga relatives po niya at kaibigan si Dorothy Santos Merck Ani Adorna, Emily at Dante Reyes at ang kanilang familia, si Joy at Alex Reyes, si Doktora Jo Adorna Guzman at ang kanilang mga pamilya at gayon din po si Alicia Adorna and family. Binabati rin po ang ating mga long time na mga kasambuhay, ang Masigan family, Joa family, Arrojado family, ang pamilya po ng Villarus, gayon din po ang family ni Didith at Joey Jacob, si Mariel Diaz ng Standard Marketing and Trading, ang kusina ni Kambal, ng San Miguel family dyan po sa Marikina, si Corazon Ochoa at Rosita Kauyan sa Discovery Bay ng Hong Kong, sana po ay nasa maayos kayo at ligtas na kalagayan, sa gitna po ng mga developments no diyan po sa Hong Kong si Alma Gonzales, Catherine Pablo, si Chona at gayon din po ang ating mga regular love offerers na sina Romel Salvador, Gemma Candela, May Asuncion Recio, Rachel Esteban, Leilani Paladio Himotea at ang isa pong hindi nagpakilalang operor natin mula po sa Capitol Hills. No? Uh, binabati ko rin po ang ating mga new found friends sa pamamagitan po ng ating mga pilgrimages, ang Spell Group at uh, Orange Group ng March 2019. Kinabibilangan po ito ng mga magkakaklase, mga high school graduates dyan po sa La Consolacion sa Bulacan o Kaloocan. Gayun din po, binabati natin ang mga co-pilgrims po natin sa Holy Land ng October 2018. Kinabibilangan po ng mga paring uh, recoletos na sina Father Randy, Father Charlie, Father Joe Alves, ang Merinol Missionary na si Father Joy, 
Gayun din po ang uh, magkakaibigan na sina Doktora Cora Cabral, Geraldine Lee, Grace at uh, Marie Joyce Brillo, si Jimmy Olazo, si Attorney Jane San Benaventura, si Nino Molina, uh, of course si Willie at Arlina Onglao at si Marites sa office po ng Journeys of Faith. At gayon din po si Anton Santos at si uh, Auntie Juliet O'Reilly, si Mr. and Mrs. Benji Datok at ang uh, kaibigan po natin na uh, mga family po ni Rose Lisi at Thailand, si Chrissy, si Rose Bell at uh, William D., uh, ang Tantwiko Group ni Dana, Kathleen at Tal, ang mag-asawang Iris at uh, Val Rivero, Juliet Estolas, si Silvet at siyempre po si Grace Pulido Tan at si Nonoy Tan. At ang grupo din po ng uh, Journey to the uh, Holy Land ng March 2019, kinabibilangan po ng grupo ni Tito Mani at Tita Lulu Recto at ang kanila mga kamag-anakan at kaibigan kasama na si Pearl at si Rafi Rodriguez. Ang simbahan po ay isang malaking pamilya ng Diyos. At binabati rin po natin ang ating mga obispo na nagdiriwang po ng kanilang Episcopal Ordination Anniversary sa loob po ng linggong ito, August 19, 2006, uh, si uh, Bishop Broderick Pabilio, ang Auxiliary Bishop of Manila. At uh, gayon din po, August 19, 2008 naman, si Bishop Joseph Nakua, uh, ang emeritus po ng Ilagan Isabela. Uh, 20th of August 2004, binabati po natin si Bishop Bernardino Cortez ng Prelature of Infanta na nagdiriwang ng kanyang Episcopal Ordination. 20th of August 2007, si Bishop Julius Tonel ng Ipil Sambuanga Sibugay. And then, of course, mula po naman sa Sorsogon, ang isang SVD na obispo, si Bishop Arturo Bastes, na kaugnay natin no, sa Bible uh, uh, Ministries. No? Siya po ay inordinan naman ng 21st of August, 1997 My personal thank you din po sa uh, Gerochi Dental at Implant Center ni Dr. Rico Martin at uh, Axel Gerochi at uh, si Dr. Azel Jade Tan na naging uh, very helpful po sa atin no mahirap pong umi-smile <laughs> kung hindi maayos ang ipin Oh, so, dyan po sa Gerochi Dental and Implant Center, mabuhay po kayo and God bless you po. Uh, we would like also to thank yung pong mga nagpadala ng mga love offerers and we, uh, mga love offering po nila and we would like to uh, remember their intentions. Kabilang na po dyan si Rosalinda Santa Maria, Annalisa Sandagon, John and Carmen Quintos, isa pong hindi nagpakilala na naghulog po sa Tambunting Palawan, si Aileen Palameño Arucan Florante Senisa, ang intentions po ni Cornelia Di Matera, isa rin pong hindi nagpakilala dyan sa Dabao Corporate Center, si Noel Areta, again anonymous po, na nagpadala ng love offering diyan sa San Fernando La Union. Ang mas intentions din po ni Miguel Alcantara, Alan Aranoo Briones, Mary Chris Aicardo, Tita Anos, John Dexter Servitillo, Lydia Felipe Pascual, Divina Sarmiento, Casimiro Valespin, 
Ronald Santos Taber, Tabora, Cleofe Anson at si Jocelyn Romero Ebaristo. Yan po, no? Ngayon po ang uh, 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time, ang atin pong mga pagbasa na maririnig po natin sa misa sa Liturgy of the Word ay tungkol po sa pagiging uh, uh, battleground ng atin pong pananampalataya that when you are close to the Lord, you are drawn into battle. Yan po, no? Hindi sapagkat ang Kristiyano ay war freak. Hindi po. Kung hindi, sapagkat kung ikaw ay kasama ni Lord, hindi mapakali ang kabila. No? Si S.A. Tan, si Taning. No? Si Taning ang battle freak, no? war freak. Siya ang agresor. Kaya po, kung ikaw ay malapit kay Lord, you are drawn into battle. Ang ating pong first reading, galing po kay Jeremiah, ang propeta Jeremiah 38 verse 4 to 6 at 8 to 10, ito po ay uh, kwento ng uh, batang-batang propeta, 33 years old na si Jeremiah, isang pari at propeta. At uh, siya po ay naging uh, saksi sa katotohanan ng Diyos Ngunit, maririnig po natin kung papaanong ang kanyang pangangaral ng mga bagay-bagay na galing sa Diyos ay hindi maganda sa pakinig ng kanyang mga kapwa kaparian At dahil po dyan, alam nyo, may mangyayari pong hindi maganda kay Jeremiah. Siya po'y papaslangin mismo sa altar ng templo ng kanyang mga kapwa pari, no? So you are drawn to battle because you have said what the Lord wants you to say and it doesn't sit well with others. Kaya po, ang responsorial sum natin ngayon, tamang-tama rin ito po yung prayer ng sino mang seryoso sa pananampalataya, Lord, come to my aid. No? Ang inaasahan natin kung tayo po'y Seryoso sa pananampalataya, walang iba kung hindi ang Panginoong Diyos lamang. Sa atin namang second reading, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 4, ay maririnig po natin kung papaanong sabi po ng may akda sa letter to the Hebrews, ang pananampalataya ay nabubuhay dahil sa cloud of witnesses. Ha? Dahil sa ulap ng mga saksi, so maraming saksi, therefore, no? na nagbuwis ng buhay, nag-endure, at sabi dito, even to the point of shedding of blood, they fixed their eyes on Jesus. Yan, ano? And then of course, sa Ebanghelyo po, Luke 12, 49 53, maririnig po natin ang mga radikal at uh, kung minsan mahirap intindihin ng mga salita ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, ako'y napunta sa mundo to set the world on fire, not on peace, but for division. At yan po ay sapagkat, oo nga, kung meron kang passion, yan, ay, yung, natatap- yung katatapos po na media conference, no? Sabi ni Bishop Maralit, dapat meron kang commitment and passion. Eh kung meron ka nun, talagang hindi mo maiwasan ko minsan, hindi mo man niloloob, mapapalaban ka. No? Yan po ang siyempre ay lesson ng Word of God para sa atin ngayon. If you are serious with your faith, it draws you into battle. Kaya... <laughs> Dapat siguro sa misa pong ito, tayo'y manalangin ng katatagan ng kalooban, katatagan ng isipan sa gitna ng lahat po ng ating mga gawain. Narito na po ang ating banal na misa mula po sa oratory ni Maria Reina ng mga apostoles dito po sa aming local community ng Society of St. Paul sa San Antonio Village 
Makati. Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, who have prepared for those who love you good things, which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princess said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. 
And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malachiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My Lord King, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered ebed the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, come to my aid. Lord, come to my aid. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me. Lord, come to my aid. The Lord heard my cry. He drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp. He set my feet upon a crag. He made firm my steps. Lord, come to my aid. And he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Many shall look on in awe and trust in the Lord. Lord, come to my aid. Though I am afflicted and poor, yet the Lord thinks of me. You are my help and my deliverer. O oh my God, hold not back. Lord, come to my aid. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us read ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and now I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against his daughter and a daughter against her mother a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 
My dear sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So una po sa lahat, patuloy tayong nagpapasalamat doon sa mga masugid nating no, taga-subaybay ng Sambuhay TV no, sa iba't ibang lupalop ng mundo, lalong-lalo na po yung mga kapatid natin sa Hong Kong na ngayon po ay nakakaranas din no, ng uh, konting pa, uh, also challenge in their faith. Ano? So tayo po ngayon ay nasa ika dalawang put, dalawang puna ng karaniwang panahon ang bilis. ang bilis-bilis ng panahon. Alam nyo po, habang pinagnilay-nilayan ko itong ating mga pagbasa ngayon, nakita ko na kapag tinatawag tayo ng Panginoon, ginagambala tayo ng Panginoon. At nakita natin lahat, no? Lahat sa mga pagbasa natin ngayon, makita natin kung paano ginagambala ng Panginoon yung mga tinawag niya. In fact, kapag binasa natin itong gospel, parang wala namang good news. <laughs> Division, no? yung message ng ating ibanghelyo ngayon. Parang nakakagambala din kahit mismo yung atin pong uh, ibanghelyo ngayon. Pero, magbibigay po ako sa inyo ngayon ng tatlong puntos kung bakit nasabi natin na nakakagambala no? yung pagtawag ng Panginoon sa atin. You know? Una po, kapag tinatawag tayo ng Panginoon na maging alagad niya, Di ba minsan, pag feel na feel mo na tinatawag ka ng Panginoon, hindi ka mapalagay. No? You are restless. Lagi tayong may hinahanap at parang may kulang. No? Parang may nawawala. Kulang na lang magwala ka rin kasi hindi mo makita kung ano yung hinahanap mo. Ano? Minsan nga po, uh, dahil bata para naman po akong pari, ano? minsan po may nagtanong sa akin, Father, Paano mo ba nalaman na ikaw ay tinawag ng Diyos na literal mo bang narinig yung Panginoon? Kasi hindi ko alam kung paano tumawag yung Panginoon. E paano nararamdaman mo ba yun? May pinapakita ba sa sayo na hindi namin makita? Ano? Anong klaseng pagtawag? May qualifications ba <laughs> yung pagtawag ng Panginoon? Tapos yung last niya na tanong, mas lalo akong nagambala. Ano? Sabi niya, Father, pero sure ako, Father, hindi talaga siguro kasama sa qualification yung mukha. Tapos sabay siya tingin sa akin ganun. Parang gusto ko sang sabihan, gusto mo mauna kang tawagin ng Panginoon ngayon. <laughs> Kasi pangit yung tingin sa akin. Parang ako yung sinasabihan niya na ano eh, no? Walang, wala sa mukha yung qualification. <laughs> Pero minsan po, when, when we realize it, when God calls us, He will continually disturb us. Bakit tayo ginagambala ng Panginoon? Para malaman natin kung ano yung mahalaga. para mahanap natin kung ano yung mahalaga. Ano? Lahat tayo dito ngayon, alam naman natin na tinatawag tayo ng Panginoon. At bakit tayo tinatawag ng Panginoon? Para tuluyan natin o para turuan tayo ng Panginoon kung paano magmahal. No? How to love. Sino po ba dito yung in love sa inyo ngayon? Oh, ang dami din pala. Si Mariel, in love na in love, o kitang kita, no? <laughs> Pero alam niyo po, kapag in love na in love ka, di ba pag in love na in love ka sa isang tao, di ba film, nagagambala ka talaga yung oras mo, hindi mo, may hinahanap ka. So ganun din yung Panginoon, laging nagagambala sa ating lahat. Kaya hindi niya tayo tatantanan hanggat hindi, niya, hindi natin siya makita. Kaya when the Lord, when we finally see the Lord in our everyday lives, the Lord will see, ah, okay na. Kaya kapag makita natin yung Panginoon sa bawat detalye ng buhay natin, di ba, tayo din nagkaroon ng katahimikan. We become at peace. Ito yung sinasabi ni St. Augustine, di ba? My heart will become restless until it will rest no, in you. Ito yung sinasabi ni, Pope, uh, ni, ni Augustine. Pangalawa po, Kapag sumusunod tayo sa Diyos, hindi lang tayo yung nagangabala. Alam nyo po, pati yung mga nasa palibot natin, nagagambala din sa atin. Kasi minsan alam nyo po, yung mga taong tinatawag, hindi yan ang intindihan ng mga taong hindi nakarinig ng tawag ng Panginoon. Kaya minsan, maraming nagagambala kapag nakita nila, kaya minsan nga po, no, pag may nagsasabi sa... Minsan tinatanong ko rin, kasi may mga mass during 12 o'clock, mas sa offices. Ang tinatanong ko minsan, bakit kailangan pa natin magmisa ng alas 12? You could have spent no, the, the one hour for your rest, but you opted to have the mass. No? So parang sa mga taong hindi nagsisimba ng alas 12, matulog na lang ako no? kasi hindi ko naman alam kung ano yung may dudulot sa akin yung pagsisimba. 
ayoko na po magsalita no pero you know when i realize also because the values the gospel proposes may at times may at times up may at times confront if not altogether contradict the values of the people around us no makikita natin ito sa lahat ng mga pagbasa natin ngayon no in the first reading jeremiah has to deal with false and biased unfounded allegations against him So dahil nagambala siguro sa mensahe na binibigay ni Jeremiah, gagambalain ka rin namin, ano? In the gospel today we also see, no, divisions that probably come, no, from no, from following the values of the gospel, ano? You know, uh, the division takes place between and among members of the household because the values of the gospel may not may not sound right or good to the persons who do not believe in Jesus that is the cause of the division kasi hindi ka maniwala sa Panginoon so nagagambala ka sa taong naniniwala kaya there will always be division kahit po sa mga magpapare o sa magmamadre o kahit po sa any consecrated no or any kind of life no vocation that we choose there will always come a time na magkakaroon talaga ng division for as long as we do not believe no in that person and in here in the case of the gospel we see Jesus tayo pong mga sumusunod sa Panginoon our Christian life should become a proposal to the world. Just like what Jesus, the life of Jesus also becomes a proposal of discipleship. Proposal of discipleship. At kapag sinabi pong proposal, hindi ka pipilitin ng Panginoon no? na sundin mo itong lahat ng ginagawa ko. It is an invitation. No? Kaya sabi dito, hindi kita pipilitin. Hindi kita pipilitin, pero gagambalain ka kapag hindi mo sinunod. That is very true. Hindi mo sundin, pero gagambalain ka kasi hindi mo sinunod. That would also bring me to the third point, no? and the last point. You know, when we are called by the Lord, don't you think God is also risking too much? Risking too much. Marami sa tinawag naman ng Diyos, hindi talaga karapat-dapat. Kahit ako pong pare, sinasabi ko minsan, may, I have also no self-doubts no, kung bakit ako tinawag ng Panginoon. Kasi I have also my own mistakes. no. I am also vulnerable to my own weaknesses and limitations. Ganyan, no? Pero patuloy pa rin no? na nag-risk ang Panginoon. Tinawag kita. The Lord continues to invite. Tandaan po natin yung discipleship is an invitation no pag-aanyaya at yung pag-anyaya na ito ng Panginoon pwedeng tanggihan ng kahit na sino. Minsan naiisip ko lang yung Diyos parang nagtataya sa ating lahat. Nagtataya, nagsusugal. Kapag nagsusugal ka sa isang tao, hindi mo naman sure kung mananalo ka. Kaya ngayon, yung challenge po sa atin, yung mensahe po sa atin ng Panginoon ano tanong sa ating lahat, hindi lang po ngayong linggo, kundi sa araw-araw na pamumuhay natin. Talo nga ba yung Panginoon sa atin? Talo nga ba si Jesus sa pagtataya ng kanyang sarili para sa atin? Talo nga ba siya? Sa ikalawang pagbasa po nakita natin, no? we are sabi ng maganding sinabi ng pangalawang pagbasa, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Yung sinasabing witnesses dito, ito hindi lang yung saints, canonized saints, but these are uh, these are Christian faithful, no? Christian faithful or faithful followers who made Jesus win by their way of life. Sana araw-araw no sa buhay natin, sana pagkatapos ng ng araw no, ang unang ang tatanong lang natin sa sarili Panalo nga ba yung Panginoon sa akin ngayong araw? Sana yung dasal natin, araw-araw, sana ma-proclaim natin, panalo ngayon yung Panginoon sa akin. Sana laging panalo yung Panginoon sa ating, sa ating lahat. Amen. Let us all stand as we proclaim our faith.
Inspired by the many who have witnessed to their faith, let us pray to the Father Almighty that we may never lose courage to live our vocation as followers of Christ. Full of confidence we pray, Lord, give us wisdom and strength. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. That Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons may become defenders of faith and inspirers of the faithful, even amid hardships and complacency, we pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. That the church may never be wanting in prophets sent by God to call his people out of complacency, lukewarm faith, and a life of compromises, we pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength that those who are called to follow Christ more closely in priestly, consecrated, and missionary life may follow their vocation even when it is misunderstood or opposed, we pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. That civil leaders may forsake the culture of nepotism, grease money, and political connections and prove to be true Christians by serving the people with integrity and dedication, we pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. That our loyalty may first be to Jesus, that we may be true to our faith, even at the expense of popularity and material rewards, we pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, give us wisdom and strength. Hear our petitions, Father, and bless us with more men and women who forgo their personal needs to pursue the interests of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrificing yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he had freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Luis Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command informed by divine teaching we dare to say. O so Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Prayer of Overseas Workers Saint Michael the Archangel, I am about to leave my family and the physical and emotional distance affect me. The physical distance means I will be living in a totally different culture where everything will be new. The emotional distance implies that no longer will I be able to embrace my loved ones when I want to. You have done special mission for God and you did it confidently, trusting that everything will be all right because our Creator has everything in His hands. Share with me the same faith. Make this travel a part of my mission here on earth. I have to leave for the good of my family and loved ones. I have to leave to do God's will. While I am away from them, protect them from dangers. Let them feel my presence through my letters and calls. Make us a strong family, even though we are far from one another. Saint Michael, through your intercession, may Jesus be the light of the family and Mary be our mother too. Amen. May partakers of Christ, through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So I would like to take this opportunity also to say uh, thank you. No, hindi ko po alam kung ito na yung last mask ko for some Buhay TV. Because last month, ginambala din po ako no, ng aming <laughs> Superior General at saka yung aming Provincia Superior to go to mission. No? So pagdasal po natin yung mga kapatid nating pari no, at saka mga manding nasa mission at yung mga kapatid din nating nasa iba't ibang lupalop ng mundo. No? I will really need your prayers no? kasi bagong bago po ako doon. Baka mag po ako ng division no? doon sa kanila. <laughs> so let us pray for one another and we continue to offer to the Lord all those whom the Lord sent no, to a mission. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. 
May your people receive your holy blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by that gift, spurn all that would harm them and obtain what they desire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and make Jesus win by your way of life. Thanks be to God. Tayo po'y nagpapasalamat sa ating paring tagapagdiwang at ngayon naman po tayo'y dadako sa ating nagtutuloy-tuloy na pabaong katikismo. Mula po sa Laudato Si, ang sulat po ng Santo Papang si Pope Francis tungkol po sa ating pangangalaga sa ating pong mundo bilang common home nating mga nilalang ng Diyos. No? At nandito tayo sa chapter 1 ng Laudato Si na kung saan tinatalakay po ni Pope Francis what is happening to our common home. Ano na ba yung mga nagaganap sa atin pong mundo? Narinig po natin ang water problem, ang uh, pollution issue, ang climate change, no? Ngayon naman po sa paragraph 48 ay uh, tinatalakay po ni Pope Francis yung tinatawag niya na global inequality. At dito, sabi po ni Pope Francis, uh, he's not just talking about global inequality, mahirap at mayaman sapagkat uh, sa pera. Kung hindi sabi niya, ang atin pong deterioration ng natural environment po natin kapag nagde-deteriorate po ang ating kalikasan, ang ating yamang lupa, yamang dagat, ang atin pong uh, uh, buong daigdig na ginawa ng Diyos na tirahan po natin, sabi niya, sabay na bumabagsak din ang ating human environment. At uh, sabi po ni Pope Francis, ang greatest effect, ang pinakamatinding dagok ng pagbagsak ng atin pong environment, natural environment, walang iba kung hindi ang mga may hirap ang talagang nakalalasap nito. Kasi yung iba naman may alternatibo eh. Halimbawa, sabi po ni Pope Francis, kapag na-deplete na, bumagsak na, yung fishing reserves, ayan, ha? yung fishing reserves bumagsak na kasi sinira ng mga mayamang bansa yung mga coral reef dyan sa uh, atin pong karagatan. It means kanya, naturally sa mga fishing communities ng mga malilit na tao, less livelihood. E wala silang pang replace doon kasi habang buhay, buong buhay nila, yun po ang kanilang hanap buhay. O halimbawa, yung water pollution, 
Ang sabi po ni Pope Francis, uh, global equality din yan kasi inequality kasi ang apektado dyan yung may hirap. Yung mayamang pwedeng bumili ng bottled water kanya. Eh yung mahirap, magtitiis na lang sa tubig na contaminated, di ba? O yung tumataas na libelo ng tubig dagat sapagkat nagkakaroon po ng melting ng ating mga ice caps dahil po sa global warming. Saan po nakakaroon ng matinding epekto ito? Sa human community din po, pero sabi po ni Pope Francis, yung mga impoverished, yung mga uh, hindi masyadong mayayaman na coastal population na hindi alam kung saan magtitirik ng bahay kung nagkaroon ng storm surge sa kanilang mga lugar, yan po. O, kaya nga sabi po ni Pope Francis, ang issue po ng... Uh, global uh, ecology, yung pangangalaga po natin ng kalikasan, ay hindi lamang po isang retorika, usapan, debate, kung hindi it involves really the life of people, lalo-lalo na po yung mga may hirap. Ang problema, sabi po ni Pope Francis sa paragraph 49, many professionals opinion makers, mga media communicators, at yung mga centers of power kanya, yung mga opinion makers at policy makers tungkol sa global ecology at local ecology issue, kanya ito naman eh, hindi naninirahan doon sa mga lugar na yan, but they come from affluent urban areas. Oh. So, sabi ni Pope Francis, they lack physical contact, they lack encounter, they don't know what they are talking about. Oh, ah, halimbawa, dito na lang po sa Metro Manila, katakot-takot na traffic. Kahit saan ka pumunta ngayon, hindi po minuto, oras ang binibilang. Sabi nga nung isang kaibigan ko, mula kainta patungong Makati, makikipag-meeting lang, labing anim na kilometro lang yan, tatlong oras kung ikaw ay minamalas-malas. Oh, eh bakit hindi masolve? Eh kasi naman yung mga nasa gobyerno, hindi naman nararanasan yan, diwang-wang, dihawi. Hmm. Sige, diwang-wang, dihawi. O di, anong karanasan nila tungkol sa oras-oras na biyahe? Wala. Eh yan po yung mga policy makers. Oh, so, gayon din po ang sinasabi ni Pope Francis sa Laudato Si, kaya hindi masolve ang problema ng ekonomiya at ng uh, ecology at ng global issue, karamihan kasi kanya doon sa mga decision makers, opinion makers, ay hindi naman po nakasawsaw eh. Wala silang kaalaman sa mga tunay na pangyayari na umaapekto sa mga taong nasa laylayan ng lipunan. Okay? So, ang masama nito, sabi ni Pope Francis, palaging bine-blame yung birth rate. Birth rate. Ay, kaya nagkakaproblema tayo dahil sa birth rate. No? Na para bang, hello, dahil sa nagparami kayo, yan ang problema. Eh, alam niyo, sabi po ni Pope Francis, unang-una kanya, uh, ang problema natin tungkol sa ecology na sumisira hindi lang sa mundo ko hindi umaapekto sa buhay ng maraming tao, eh hindi dahil sa pagdami ng tao kung hindi yung mga maling pamamaraan ng tao. Halimbawa kanya, waste products. O, oh, bakit? Saan nanggagaling ang maraming waste products? Consumption. Consumption ng ano? Consumption na mayayaman. O, oh, na kadalasan naman, sabi niya, one-third of all the food is discarded. Isi isipin mo yan. O? Oh? Mga supermarket, grocery, ang mamahal. O, oh, pag na-expire, saan pumupunta yung mga pagkain doon na na-expire, discarded, tapon. O, oh, saan itatambak yon? Eh, problema ngayon kung sa itatambak, 
tatambak sa dagat uli. O di, waste product yon. Ganda po na sabi ni Pope Francis, whenever food is thrown out, it is as it were, is stolen from the table of the poor. Tama po yun. Sobra-sobra yung iba, yung iba naman walang-wala. So, hindi po problema yan ng birth rate. Problema po yan ng maling consumption. Eto pa, kanya. O, oh, sinasabi nila na deplete ang raw materials. Sino nagdideplete niyan? Pilipinas? Hindi, mayamang mga bansa. Sino nagmimina sa Pilipinas? Sino nakikinabang diya sa mga black gold na yan sa tabi ng dagat? Sino ang kumukuha ng iba't ibang mga yamang lupa, yamang dagat ng Pilipinas na dapat sasapat sa ating bansa? O hindi po, hindi Pilipino. Yung mga mayayamang mga bansa na merong kakayahang magmina, mangalap ng isda, no? Na hindi naman kaya ni pobreng Juan de la Cruz, no? So, yung mayamang bansa ang nagdideplete ng natural resources na sana po pakikinabangan mismo nung may ari. O, maliban po doon sapagkat masyadong industrialized ang mayayamang bansa, syempre, mas mataas din po ang kanilang carbon dioxide emission. Kaya in a way, tama rin po si President Duterte na dapat hindi pareho yung penalization, eh, no? na yung Amerika at Pilipinas pareho magsasign dyan sa reduction of carbon. Abay, sa totoo lang, mas malakas ang carbon, red, ang carbon uh, emission sa Amerika kasi mas industrialized sila. Mas malakas ang carbon emission sa China kaysa sa Pilipinas kasi mas marami silang industriya tapos makikisign tayo. O hindi po. Ang ganda po na sinabi po dito ni Pope Francis. Sabi niya, Developing countries where the most important reserves of the biosphere are found continue to fuel the development of the richer countries at the cost of our own present and future. And therefore, sabi ni Pope Francis, ito po ay paragraph 52 ng Laudato Si. Sabi niya, dapat ang isyo kanya ng responsibilidad sa pagkasira ng mundo must be a differentiated responsibility. Dapat we should give responsibility to whom responsibility is due. Hindi yung sasabi mo, lahat tayo involved in a way, yes, pero in a way then merong mas involved at mas concern kaysa sa iba. Kaya, yun po yung magandang term ni Pope Francis, differentiated responsibilities. We are all stewards, pero even in the gospel, di ba po, sinasabi mismo na ating Panginoong Iso Kristo, to him who is given more, more is asked in return. So, yung mga developed countries na yan, more is asked in return. Yung mga mayayaman sa lipunan, more is asked in return when it comes to taking care of the environment of the world, our common home. Tutuloy po natin yan sa susunod natin mga uh, pagsasambuhay TV Mass. No? In, the, in the meantime, we would like to invite you to be our kasambuhay Pauline Cooperators. So, paanong paraan po? Siyempre, unang-una, ang inyo po mga love offerings ay napakalaking tulong po sa pagtutuloy-tuloy ng atin pong apostolado. Pangalawa po, uh, siyempre nakikita nyo dyan yung ating mga pwedeng gamitin sa atin pong love offerings at remittance. No? Ngayon, pangalawa, you can also be a promoter ng atin pong uh, uh, Sambuhay TV Apostolate. Kaya nasa screen po ang atin pong mga iba't ibang mga cable networks at channels na gamit po ng TV Maria. And then of course, nasa screen din po natin ang atin pong text number 
para naman po sa inyong mga feedbacks at mga mass intentions. Sa ngalan po ni uh, Father Resti de la Peña, ni uh, Cleric Kiev de Matatak at lahat po ng bumubuo ng St. Paul Audiovisuals at ng Sambuhay TV, iniiwan po namin sa inyo ang panalangin ito ni Blessed James Alberione to spend the week well. My dear and sweet Mother Mary, keep your holy hand upon me, guard my mind, my heart, my senses, that I may never commit sin. Bless my thoughts, affections, words, and actions, that I may always please you, and Jesus my God, Jesus and Mary, give me your most holy blessings. Amen. Amen.